everybody, my name is Jose Kok. I work at Auerhand Zoon Renen in the Netherlands. And I love to work with all um, species we have in our zoo, but especially the polar bears, of course. I'm involved with the polar bears for, for a long time now. Um, as you probably know, we currently have four polar bears. That is Huggies, Freedom and her two cubs, who are no longer cubs. And I'm sure you would like to know that more about these two cubs because they are more than um, over. Oh, well, they're no longer cubs. And as you know, we might want to send them away because they are too big now. The problem, however, is that um, we work with a, within the breeding program, the European breeding program, and we have a coordinator and the coordinator always knows where, uh, how the demography is and um, where we should send our bears. And there were massive plans um, in several zoos in Europe, so we were very hopeful that there would be places for Sura and Akiak. But at the moment they are not, because the uh, the building has been delayed in all these zoos. So we are still waiting for, um, well, to get to know where these polar bears can go to. In the meantime, for those who have have seen the um, the footage of our polar bears, you saw that first we had Freedom and Akiak and Sura, Sura together. And then there all of a sudden was a fourth polar bear, and this was Huggies. Huggies had been in her, in her den for some months because she was mated in spring last year, and we were really expecting some, some cubs from her. But this time, well, it didn't work out that way. She appeared uh, almost a month ago, and uh, we said, well, just go out and explore the enclosure. We put her, maybe you know that we have two sides of our enclosure, an older side and this tundra side, and we said, well, you better go to your old facility first. But after some time, we already noticed that she was really eager to go to the other side and meet Freedom, Sura and Akiak. So she, she went there and um, as some of you might have noticed, Huggies is an old polar bear, but she is still the boss. So we had this very curious Akiak. You, you must have seen him jumping everywhere and he was very, very curious. So he went over sneaking down to his grandmother, in fact, and tried to interact with her. And you could clearly see that Huggies was interested as well, but in the in the mean at, at the same time, you know she's an old lady, so she let him come a little bit closer, 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 and then at a certain point she she turned around, and she really went for him, chased him away, and she did the same with well Freedom and um, Sura too. But so after some time, we decided to have her back into the indoor facility and put her on the other side. But now we're at a, at a certain point that we can see um, what we can do. So management wise, we decide every day where is Huggies going to stay? Where is Freedom and her cubs going, going to stay and which side of the polar bear enclosure? If you ask me something about Akiak, well, he is really, really very active. You know, we know from male cups that they're very inquisitive and they really want to explore their facility, but Akiak is a, a real character. So I'm sure you, you enjoy watching him like I do. Um, Then there was something else. Some of you approached me, sent me some emails asking about um, Sura's skin. Um, we've noticed, and you've obviously noticed as well, that she has a very thin fur and there is this uh, skin, while well, the black of the skin is coming through it. And we were really a little bit worried about it. and. 
I got into contact with our vet and I asked him to have a good look and he did and then we decided to have um, a good checkup and that happened last week on the 1st of March. So our vet took a little biopt uh, to, well, and sent it to the lab. We do not have the, the results yet. Um, so we're very curious to know to know what's going on there. But as I saw today, it it looks like it's it's getting a little bit better. I must say that Huggies sometimes has this problem too, and what we think is it could have it could have something to do with um, the food, the, the 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 vitamin A content probably. But we're very curious about these, um, uh, these results. Um, since there is another polar bear in, in Sweden that looks like having the same problems, we might get into contact. And this is typically something that we uh, research um, further. And we get into contact with a polar bear EP that has, that is the breeding program, sorry, the, the European polar bear breeding program. And we do have um, a polar bear advisor. And what he does is he collects all kinds of information, research results from all zoos. And since he collects all that, um, he has a good insight in what's going on where. And we really hope that with our results from the uh, research which was which was done on Sura that he can help us a little bit further and get her better in her fur because it looks like the fur is not really thick enough it's not as white thick uh, like for instance the one of the, the fur of Akiak. So I was wondering if there is any any more questions Maybe I can tell you a little bit more about our plans. This uh, facility that you can see, we, we built it uh, in, two th in the year 2000. And um, I must admit, we're still very happy with it. But what we would like to do, we have the other side, and the other side is, is still maybe a little bit old-fashioned. So it has a lot of concrete. It does have water, and we did put a, um, a lot of sand in it. But really this year, if we have the time and money, we're going to enlarge that area as well. And what I would like to do uh, also is get more flexibility into the um, enclosure. So that means that uh, we might put more sluices and um, so that polar bears can choose where they want to be. And I can see there is a there is a question um, a question about are we going to put more fish in it? Yes, definitely we are going to do that. The enclosure has been been closed. Um, sorry, has been uh, cleaned, and we're going to put a live fish back into it. It it is it is a real good um, um, enrichment for the small bears, for the younger bears. You can see that the mother is um, teaching them how to catch the fish because in the beginning, the first time you will see that the cubs just <coughs> try to catch the fish, but mother is teaching them. She goes down to the bottom and then goes up and catches the fish, and the cubs will learn from from her from her. And yes, I can see that there is a question about moving around to two enclosures. That is exactly that we want to do more flexibility. And once we have also um, refurbished the other, the other part, part, there will be more um, uh, possibility for the bear to roam around. Wow. Would we consider an underwater camera? That would be lovely. We can consider it, but I'm not sure if we're going to manage that. And then the the diet for the bears. You know, um, our our diet is more or less, more or less seasonal. That means that um, from June, no, July, August, September, we have more fruits in it. And then when winter approaches, the, the bears get more 
um, fat and meat. If you want to know exactly what they get, well, they get lamb, they get chicken, they get beef fat, they get mackerel, of course. Um, let me see what else. They get cod liver, but cod liver is more a treat. And you might find it very funny, but we also feed them sometimes strawberries. That is in summer, of course, strawberries. And they get raisins and they get nuts. And that is to, um, well, make the diet more seasonable, uh, like, like the normal natural season. Wow, the approximate weight of the bears. I think Huggies is now around, I really have to guess now, but I think around 250 freedom the same. And Akiak and Sura are about half their weight. Um, but if you're interested in that, you know, we have a scale indoors, but we didn't weigh them for, for some time yet. But once we've done that, I can get back to you with the the exact weights. There is a question about a criteria you use when choosing bear toys. You know, this is this is really difficult for polar bears. As you know, they are proper bears, so they really use their toys. That means that these toys have to be very um, tough ones, and that is not very easy to these things are not very easy to find for polar bears. So we have these big rubber balls. They are very heavy. And believe me, we have a 121 and the polar bears can just grab it and lift it up and leave it down again. So what are the criteria? Well, anything that they can, we think that they can use. The thing, what they would like, what would enrich their lives. Uh, but again, it is not very, not very easy. Have I ever had a favorite bear and bear cup? Yes, I still have. You know, I like Huggies very much. I've known Huggies for such a long time. She was, um, she came from the wild. She was found in, in Wrangell Island, north of Russia. And, um, when she was about three months old, she was in this bear tub in, in a Moscow flat. And we got this phone call asking us, can you have a young polar bear? I think she was about estimated, maybe four months. And we collected her, brought her to the zoo. And the funny thing is that she was that small at the time. She couldn't be uh, together with the the, the grown well, the adult polar bears we had at that time. So we put her in a separate enclosure. And at that time, we were also building our rescue center for brown bears. And we had a brown bear, a small one from Sweden. And we put them together so that they had, they were real playmates. But of course, Huggies, she is a polar bear and grew so, so fast. So we had to remove it. The brown bear went to the bear forest and Huggies were introduced her in with the adult um, polar bears in our facility that time. And from that time, she's she's my favorite. And she had this walker. A walker is now in, that was one of her male cubs, and he's now in Kinusi. And he is really, really nice polar bear. I like them very much. Mm, ah, let me see if you have more. Well, you know, there's this question about um, if Akiak and Sura are going to mo be moved from, from our zoo. They will not be together, probably, since they are brother and sister. And within uh, a proper breeding program, we always have to make sure that you do not breed within uh, kinship. So we, we really need to have um, genetic diversity. So they will go to separate zoos but I don't know yet uh, where they will go to. Um, there's this other question if if Sura could stay behind um, with freedom. Uh, that is a possibility. What we know from research, well as of course you know that polar bears are not group animals. They, they don't like to live in herds. 
Um, and we've seen from research in the past in several zoos that it is really it can affect their um, welfare. So if you have many polar bears, that doesn't mean that, that they are happy and their welfare is good. But what we know is that if you have uh, female polar bears together that are related, that can work very well. And that is exactly what we do in our zoo. We have Huggies and then her daughter, Freedom. So we might um, uh, decide together with the coordinator that Sura can stay, but it really depends on other places within the breeding program. If she needs to go somewhere for breeding, we have to let her go. That's a nice question. If we have been doing some training with um, uh, the cubs and with the, the, the polar bears in general, we do do training, but not uh, as much as some of the zoos in the United States do. But we do, we are going, we're planning to do that. Um, in fact, if you have polar bears in a zoo, you do the basic training because you want to have your management in case you, you really need your bears indoors. They have to be able to, to react to a call or whatsoever. So that is just a very tiny part of training. But together with Polar Bears International, we're going to set up a, a proper uh, research program for which training is needed. So in the near future, we're going to do that. Mm. Wow, this is this question. When do male, po male bears start having interest in the females? Well, in the wild, that's, that's just about when they're about five or six years old or maybe four. But in uh, zoos, we've seen that that can be much, much earlier. We found out that uh, a male we had many years ago, which was Victor, and he started to be interested in, in the females when he was about three years old. And that is why we decided that we um, uh, had to, um, what you call that? We don't want any, any cups from, we don't want Akiak to mate the other ladies. So uh, we put him on anti-conception, but just, uh, just temporarily. Um, and if he's Akiak smitten with Huggies, I don't know what smitten means, but I think that uh, it means like, um, you know, he's trying to challenge her and um, he's trying to find out how far can I go. And you must have noticed that Huggies has her limits as well. And there's a certain point she says, go away. But as I uh, interpreted it, I think they're having a, a lot of fun. Another question. Hi, I love polar bears. How are they doing out in the wild since all these polar ice is melting? What will happen to them? Yeah, that is exactly why um, we are so concerned. We know that uh, with this climate change, a lot of ice is melting and polar bears are the ones that are really dependent on ice. They need ice to, for hunting. They need ice to hunt for seals. And if they don't have that ice, it is very, very hard for them to find enough food. So we're worried, uh, uh, especially the, the, the polar bears that, uh, well, for, and for example, the polar bears that get ashore, like in, in Hudson Bay, Western Hudson Bay, you can see that they come ashore and uh, they stay on land when the ice goes back and then the ice, uh, when the ice retreats, when the ice come back, um, they can go back on the ice for hunting. But the period that they are on land is now getting longer and longer because the ice retreats earlier and comes back later. For this population that is now already very, very tough, and you can imagine that if this is a problem here, it is going to be at other places as well. So, yes, we're very worried about that. What is the life expectancy of a polar bear? You know, in, in the wild, the average age is maybe 16 years old. But like in zoos, we have good food, we have vets around, so they can get very, 
a lot older. Like I told you just now, our Huggies is now 23 years old. Um, so maybe in the wild she wouldn't be there anymore, but just because of our good care she is still there. Do polar bears mate for life? Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question well, but I think uh, this is a question about pairing. Do the male and female stay together for their whole life? Well, that is, that is not the, um, what it is. In fact, they move around in the wild and they come together when it is um, uh, time to breed and then they separate again. What we know is that um, bears can mate with several males just in this short period and then they separate again. So, no, there is no um, marriage-like construction with polar bears. And can polar bears live in the heat? For polar bears that is, is quite um, difficult. They can live in the heat, but they should have cold water where they can cool down. You know they have this very thick uh, fur. They are so isolated, which means that they can stand the cold very well, but they can get overheated. So they will really need water um, to cool down or, or snow even better, but they need that. Um, I see how many polar bears we have. Oh, we have four at the moment. We have um, one that is 23 years old, then we have Freedom. She was born in 2001, so she is now about 16. And we had the cubs that were born a year and a half ago. Hmm. You want to know if uh, we're going to breed Freedom and Huggies again? Uh, when the two cups are, are, are gone. Well, Freedom is a 16-year-old, so she could she could be a mum once more. Huggies is now 23. I'm not really sure if we're going to breed her again. And for this year, it's going to be very difficult because mating time is February, March, and we cannot, we do not have a, a male to breed them with. So this year we're not going to get cubs, but I hope next year we're going to be in that position again. Mm. Um, there is this question. Um, was wondering if Freedom was a very playful bear before she had Akia and Sura. Very playful, maybe not so playful, but very curious and always looking for challenges. So I think Akia Kinsura has some of her character. And there is this other question. Does Hagi sleep in the den with the other three or does she have her own den? You know, they do not really look for each other to sleep with. Um, they can live, they can sleep with well one day freedom can be with her two cups or she, um, she can be more together to uh, with huggies or closer to huggies so since they've been so together um, just very short now i it's not very easy for me to answer this question i owe you the uh, the 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 answer here i really do not yet know It seems like Huggies is having the best time we've seen there. She is so playful with Akiak. Have you noticed that change in her behavior? Yes, I have, and I'm very happy with that. You know, when Huggies was, when polar bears are, are in their den, in their maternity den, they they have a, they kind of sleep, and it really looks so lovely to 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 see that polar bear just lying there. And but then the moment she wakes up and she does not have cubs. It's always, um, we're always very curious to see what's going on with her. So I'm very happy that she is so active and it looks like she's hmm, getting more back to more normal life. Um, will Freedom keep nursing them until the cubs leave? Probably she will. Um, 
we can only stop this when we uh, separate them from their mum and we do not have the facilities to do that now and but well if we would have the facilities for us there is no reason to do that they seem to be okay so i think she's going to going to nurse her cups until they leave how much do they weigh you know i'm not not so um sure about that but akiak and sura akiak will be maybe around 150 kilograms uh, sura a little bit less and then huggies and freedom 200 220 but as i said before we we do have a scale so uh, once we've recorded our weights i will make sure that i get back to you with the with the exact weights I was wondering if there is more questions coming. No more questions. Well, I hope you enjoy watching our polar bears. You know what happened? Uh, we had a, a, a little accident um, oh, some weeks ago. The, 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 the under, underneath the, the, the polar bear facility, we have the pumps for uh, making the water circulate, and there was some um, water in there. So we were very um, uh, afraid that things were broken down and just today I just I heard that it's everything is okay so we are now slowly filling up the um, the whole pond with um, with the water and you can see that um, the whole filtering system is has to start up again I'm not sure if you can see it very well from the footage what you see but we can see it is just a little bit green and it really has to to get started and once that is uh, done we are going to put in more uh, live fish so we will um, one more is it a problem to have two female bears in one enclosure? You know, in our situation, that is not a problem at all, because um, from earlier research in zoos, we found out that you can keep female polar bears together if they are related. So if there is a mother, daughter, or it is two sisters, and that is exactly what we do in our facility. Huggies is the mother and Freedom is the daughter. But if you would have two unrelated um, female uh, polar bears, I'm sure that is going to be more difficult. And next to that, I, I really um, think you always have to... to you, you can put bears together, but you never know exactly what is going to happen. So you have to really be very observative and see what's going on. If they feel happy, you always have to guarantee their welfare. So we really close, um, clo uh, observe them closely. And if we see that there is a kind of tension between the two polar bears, we just separate them for a while and then bring them back together. But in general, between Huggies and, and Freedom, there is not a problem there. But it really brings me to my next point, and that is that you cannot have bears, in fact, in one enclosure. We always recommend, if people come, zoos come to us, ask for advice when they want to build a polar bear facility, we always say you have to, um, to have to have um, the number of outdoor enclosures as you want to have adult polar bears. So, in fact, in our case, we should have two outdoor facilities, which we have. And they are interlinked. We have sluices in between. So if we really want to separate the polar bears, we can do that. But if we don't want it, we open up the sluices and they can uh, use the whole area. Flexibility is key. <laughs> this is a nice question. If you will be having treat, special treats for the polar bears on Easter, hide and find Easter treats 
always love to watch things. <laughs> Thanks for your discussions. Wow, this is a nice idea. And I really did not think about it yet, but sure, we're going to do that. We're going we're gonna to think about something nice for Easter. Yes, you know, eggs are in their diet, so maybe we could do something with eggs or we could do something with ice. I don't know, but thank you very much for the suggestion. We're going to think about this. Um, when freedom and huggies toss their heads around, is it because they pick up a new smell or searching for new smells? Yes, polar bears are they are their nose is key to them, so they really want to. Um, well, it it is their point of orientation. So if they s smell something or they want to be sure what's going on there, they they will put their nose up just to get the full scent in their noses. Uh, another question. Is it normal behavior for Akio to try to defend freedom when Huggy <laughs> comes close? Why, well, it's his mom. <laughs> yeah. And in this situation, I'm not sure if it is really defending or it is more a kind of behavior that uh, Akiak wants to get closer to Huggies and then Huggies turns around and moves back just to let him know, you know, I like you very much, but don't go get closer to me now at this moment. Um, it is hard to tell the difference between the two. Do you notice difference in activity and interest in food in summer and winter? There is not really a difference um, uh, in interest, but we do have different diets. So it could be that they um, will, well, because there's a different diet, they will, they will behave differently. There is food items that they are really uh, keen on and maybe others not so much. For instance, if we feed them apples, then um, they have to get used to that. Um, and then what you what you should know, maybe what I'd like to tell you is that um, when we have a, a female mated, we know that she is going to go into her maternity then by the end of the year. Like for instance, last year Huggies was mated and she went into a maternity den. And this maternity den is a, is a small area like in the wilds. It's very quiet and it's dark. And once, what we see is that uh, the polar bear, the female, will go in and out, in and out. And at a certain point, she will not come out again. And at that point, we close the door and we no longer enter the facility. So the, the, the polar bear uh, female is there in her little uh, den and she has access to water so she can drink, but she doesn't eat. Like again in the wild, they put up enough fat and they go down in their maternity then and just stay there until the cubs are born and nurse them. So that is what we mimic in our zoo. Once the, 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 the maternity den is closed, we no longer go in there. We have, of course, cameras and mics so that we can observe if there's a cubs born and we can hear the cubs. But then only after maybe... Um, eight or ten weeks when we know that she's moving around we start feeding her again but not um, during her maternity uh, period mm. why are there sometimes rolling in dirt after swimming ah yes yes this is this is nice that you ask this question. You know, I've seen this behavior too when um, Huggies came out of her maternity then. I don't know if you've seen it, but we have this area where there's a lot of soil. So she got out and she went into the pool and then she came out and started rolling in, in, in the dirt, in, in the soil. And I think it has to do with, um, um, well... Taking care of your fur, getting rid of dirt that you don't want there, a part of um, washing maybe, or 
What could also be is that like she had been in this maternity den for so many months that she wanted to get rid of maybe loose hairs or I don't know. But it is clear that they like it very much. And we always make jokes. We say, you know, in our zoo, we have white polar bears, but we also have brown ones. And that are the ones that have been rolling in the dirt. Any more questions? No more questions? You know, I'm looking forward to, to spring. I don't think there is more questions. You want me to continue talking? Let me see, what did I not tell you? Um, did I tell you that we have uh, special polar bear keepers? So there is, um, we have, <laughs> Thank you. Let me finish this. We have a special polar bear team keepers and they are very, very ded dedicated to their polar bears. They can read and write with them. And um, when they move around, that's that's likewise with the, the polar bears know them very well, too. They can if they see them, if they hear them, you can see the nose is going up and they are very um, alert and um, ah another question are there things that polar bears are allergic to wow Ooh. I don't know not that I know of It doesn't mean that they can have uh, allergic reactions, but I do not know if if they're allergic to something. Sorry. This is a nice question again. We have seen Sura catch a fish and then it be taken away by Freedom or Akiak. Does she do this because they are a family or would a bear in the wild have defended the catch no matter who wanted it? You know, I think... Um, I'm not sure. These are bears in, in, in a zoo. So they will get their food anyway. But in the wild where they live, where polar bears live, it is very important that you eat what you can get. So um, I'm not sure, sure of sharing in a family is, is a thing you should do as a wild polar bear. But maybe you can, um, well, you can do it in, in a zoo-like setting because there is enough food to find. So not sharing, but maybe not as um, uh, eager like polar bears should be in the wild. Does that answer your question? I hope it does. Mm, be left on the water when the days get longer. Will the campers be left on later when the days get longer? Well, this is something that we can discuss. Yes, if, if that is something that you would like, I can... Um, uh, we can consider this. I will get into contact with this explorer and see if we see if we can do that. And then there's the question about who is the father of Akiak and Sura. Akiak and Sura were uh, the father was still Victor, 
who was with us at that time, that mating season, and, and Victor is the one who went to Yorkshire Park in um, Britain. And uh, he is there now with other uh, males, together with other males, because Victor was a very good father and he had had too many cups already. So from the, the the breeding coordinator, we were told that he could no longer breed, so he went to a Yorkshire Park and is really enjoying his lovely life there. And then the father of Freedom, Freedom was born... Um, I told you about Huggies, that we got her from uh, Russia. She came to our zoo and then um, at a certain point uh, she left our zoo and went to a zoo in Sweden for breeding. And at that time she, she did get two cups and one of these cups was Freedom. And then uh, laws changed in Sweden, so uh, this zoo asked us if we could have Huggies and this one cup, Freedom, back. So Freedom was mated by a male in Sweden. Uh, no, sorry, my mistake. Huggies was mated by a male in Sweden and Freedom was the cup that was born after that. But I do not know the name of um, Free Freedom's father, but I can look it up if you, if you want me. I can put it on the chat later on. Mm. Can the caretakers in your zoo touch bears? You know, no. We do not do that. Of course, there is always this temptation to do that, but bears are bears and they are big and heavy and, um, well, we should not touch them and we don't touch them. It is also uh, a matter of, of respect. Of course, if we uh, uh, train, start training them more, we, we might have want to to touch them. For instance, we do have um, a training session now for, we had it for Huggies because we were interested, to, we were participating in a research done in Germany and this person wanted us to collect hairs from Huggies in this uh, case and then we have to train and touch her. But it is not that we cuddle or or embrace them. You know, they're, they're bears, we don't do that. And this uh, research is um, it, it's very interesting because um, with this research we try to find out what the if it is possible to me to measure uh, cortisol and the relation to stress. So we do take hairs and we also collect poo, and then the uh, level is uh, uh, of cortisol is measured, and then we can see if there is. Um, what is uh, creating more stress? If you combine this with behavioral uh, research, you can uh, uh, have maybe see a relation between stressful situations and the type of behavior, which makes us uh, we gets up in a position to have a better management that we can anticipate on this type of situations. So there is some things I have to have now on my to-do list. I will find out the exact weights. I will let you know who's the father of freedom. And we're gonna think about nice Easter presents. If I do work with other animals, yes, I well in fact um brown bears and at the moment, we are uh, um, expecting the arrival of giant panda. So probably giant panda is on my list as well. And it's maybe nice to tell you that uh, a year ago, we also got to, um, to Malayan sun bears. So we have our, our bear forest, which, which is a rescue center for former dancing bears and circus bears. And there is a little part which we created in this. 
And what we see is that when we maybe put a hundred trouts in there, then the first 75 are caught very quickly. And the clever trout stay, stay well, they can hide underneath stones and, and uh, will stay a while. We had 90 and they catch them all in three months. Well, yeah, that is very good. <laughs> I'm not sure if, you know, I'll have to, I'll have to count. I, I don't know, but I will count this time. 90 trouts and they catch them in three months time. Well, maybe we have the same speed. Uh, there's another question. Is there enough genetic diversity in the breeding program? Yes, there is. I think we are a very lucky um, um, breeding program. We had quite some uh, input from the wilds a, a while ago, and then there is uh, a lot of breeding going on. Maybe ten years we saw that ten years ago we saw that breeding was uh, was not breeding and rearing was not going on very very well. In fact, only maybe in our zoo and in Alborg it was where cubs were born. So we started um, to to teach other zoos how to do it, which means that um, well we put up. Uh, attend do's and don'ts if you want to breed and rear polar bears. In many cases we had facts that polar bears were born, cubs were born, but they died within 10 days after they were born. And we see now that uh, through better management that more cubs stay alive uh, every year. So we can move around um, within European zoos and make sure that the diverse genetic diversity is at is at a good level. So yes, I think we're lucky. More questions. But as I said, we um there is a. Uh, if I'm not, um, uh, if I remember well, there's, it's about five or six European zoos now planning uh, to build uh, new polar bear facilities. And uh, but because the the construction was delayed, um, I think they will only open maybe in 2018. So it could be that we have to wait um, before sending away Akia Kinsura for another half a year or maybe even longer. And that is, of course, that is always something that, that is not good for a breeding program because then you have to, to stay with uh, in, in the composition like you have. And for good uh, genetic diversity, you need to be able to move bears um, and have them in, in good couples. So at the moment there is a little bit of a hiccup, but I'm sure we're going to overcome that. Easter eggs, yes, Easter treats. I wonder if there's more questions. You know what is nice to to inform you about is that you know of course of International Polar Bear Day. And in Holland that was not a very known event uh, until this year. In our zoo, we always have sp um, a special program on International Polar Bear Day. We want to pay attention while well, we want to make people aware of the climate problem and the problems that polar bears uh, face. And um, this time it was in the end of February and the day before um, I got a phone call from um, a television group not far from us. And this person was asking me, do you, do you know something about International Polar Bear Day? What do you do? And he came, the reporter came to the zoo. So we had a ni very nice chance to chat about this and it was broadcasted. And I think this is lovely. You know, 
um, this International Poly Baby Day is now maybe a little bit more known. Ten years ago, nobody knew about it, but through good uh, creating awareness, you can see that it's getting more known. And I really hope that this is going to be this snowball effect, that more and more people start to realize, wow, climate change is something that is really, really a threat, not only to polar bears, but for polar bears, very obvious. So I hope we're not too late. We can do something to have polar bears survive in the wild. Maybe I should talk a little bit more. You know, our facility was built in 2000. And in our zoo, we had uh, polar bears. Our zoo is now 85 years old. And we had polar bears for a long, long time. Okay, just this last question, uh, just this last uh, tundra, there's going to be soil and bears will be messy there, as one of you noticed that she, bears can be very, very dirty there, but we really think that it is a necessity for them. So that was my last remark. No more questions. I hope to meet you again. Please do enjoy. Please get into contact with me and I get back to you with your remarks. That is the weights and definitely the nice idea for Easter. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, and another one. Freedom's father. I'll check it. Okay, thank you. I see there's not so many. No more questions coming in. So what I would like to do is thank you very much. It was nice chatting with you. And I really hope you do enjoy our polar bears as much as I do. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. And I will get back to you with the questions that were answers to the questions that were raised, raised during this session. And we're going to think about something nice for Easter. So keep on watching. Um, yes, keep on watching. I'm thinking, maybe if you have nice ideas, you could share them with me. In the meantime, um, I do hope that um, results from the research on Sura will come soon and that we will be able, able to help her reduce the scratching, etc. Uh, but I have good hopes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.